Hello, 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 everyone. It's Johnny, back from some more Disco Elysium. Um, just want to check, make sure that you can see and hear me. Um, can both see and hear. Wonderful. Hey, we've got Maddie uh, as the mod uh, for today. Hello again, Maddie. Uh, hey, I'm Corco, gifted a tier one sub to Kate B, aka Daily Show Chica. They've given 189 gift subs in the channel, which is so many an absurd gifts. number of gift chats, gift subs. Thank you so many. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm yelling. <laughs> And Jester is here as well. It's two people on a Friday once again. Wonderful news. <clears throat> Apparently Jester and Maddie have both been subscribed for 52 months now. What a lot of months. You look so tired. I, well, I'm, I am, but not, not, not of the stream. Um, so, right. We are continuing our... Um, uh, We are continuing our, our dive through Disco Elysium. Uh, now, as always, uh, gonna say you do want to pay attention to the content warnings uh, for this game more generally, and also we are in um, we are in a specific section of the game where I want to give a specific content warning uh, for sexual violence. There is none depicted, uh, but there is uh, a lot of. Uh, talk about it specifically about the uh, veracity of a rape claim um and uh there is also in this particular like conversation that we are about to have i will give a very strong content warning for a description of sexual violence um so i'm gonna just hit continue Right, so we've just had a um, just had a long conversation with Joyce about evil mercenaries that were hired by Capital to try and break a strike, and things have gone pretty badly. Waiting for me to leave. No, no, it's not for a little while. Ah, oh, there's that bag! Couldn't find this bag earlier. This plastic bag has a Frit, sick, logo uh, written on it in a dynamic, forceful manner that implies great prices. As you crack it open, a multi gust of air flies in your face, it smells of yeast and beer. A perfect place for tear. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? I solved. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. Wait. What did I crack exactly? What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. Oh, it's her husband. The missing husband. Yes. And you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Give me champagne. I'm going in. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now. There is something down there. Protect and serve, madam. I found your husband. God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. Well, I found him nevertheless. I'm that good. Very well then. Where is he? There. Excuse me? I, I don't follow. There's something else hiding in her voice, though. A trace of worry. I found a working class drunk and I thought he might be yours. Right, cause 
working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? What? You were ah, land. Knew it. So, is he missing as well? No, he's not. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's probably in the park, or in Shamrock somewhere, drinking with his friends. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him! There. She's worried now. Don't worry. I'm gonna find him and bring him back home. Promise. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? What does your husband look like? Honestly, not that different from you. Like a late-stage alcoholic, then? That's one way to put it, yes. No offense. I'd also add he's a little bit chubby. I see. What else? What else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand-sewn. I made it myself. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely sympathize. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Well, if that jacket is really that cool, then I can totally understand. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. When did you last see him? Yesterday morning. He went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. Just makes me feel weak. Gone for around 36 hours then. Damn, this is a missing persons case. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. I think I got it. Thanks. So you are going to look for him? Yes, I will bring him back home to you. Thank you. Please do even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. She tries to maintain a brave front, even though her eyes reveal the opposite. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Precinct 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? I will, of course, officer. As I said, Thanks. it's probably nothing. Thanks. I'll get going then. Motorway South. Motorway South. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder for an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting, until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. The motion of a human throat swallowing, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamra. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. That's maybe my favourite thought in the entire game. Really love the motorway south. Right. 
Now, this is, again, the conversation where I'm going to say strong content warning for descriptions of sexual violence. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Hey, tough guy. I had more questions. Things are busy enough. You going to waste less of my time? We'll see. The Hulkin man oozes stark skepticism. You a mercenary hired by Wild Pines? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? His neck muscles tense up. The veins on his neck bulge. Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fucking fine. You hear a tiny rattle, a small radio, cracking somewhere, an earpiece. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay, of course. There could be weapons aiming at us right now, somewhere above, in the buildings. The other Merc. Don't push this. He's thinking. This is not the time. Okay. The man's breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right-to-work dance back on. I think you may be able to help me decipher some tattoos. Don't think so. Suddenly, this feels like a really, really bad idea. It was on your colonel. Wordless, he takes the photo and looks at it. Grey eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface. His face is unmoving. Hard as a stone, but beneath it, you see dead flesh in colorful rivers of polychrome, melting skin and hair. Fucking loincloths. Really did him in. Can you tell me what the tattoo means? What it means? I can tell you what this one means. Only one. You want to hear what happened here? Yes. Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep in the fucking bush. In Benital. 41. Monsoon season. He's on a reconnaissance mission. Benital is one of the inhabited islands of the Seminese archipelago near the Pale. Covered in jungle, it was anchor point for the Seminese nationalists in the proxy war held on the islanders' territory. He spent a month behind enemy lines, scouting kept villages. Nothing but fucking bugs and snakes for fun. Men are getting restless. There's talk of switching employers with some strange emotion. This is about to get really graphic. Last moment to back off. Our boy, he's only a captain then, but he knows how these men think. If they don't see action soon. At dawn, he comes upon two kids, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe. They were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless, but the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know, but not too old. She was quite the entertainment for the week she lasted, expired in the hands of Sarge Mason, the kind of guy who'd make Chief there shit his pants and cry like a bitch. God, <laughs> Mason couldn't let go, cut the tits off her cold body, and fucking ate them. <laughs> Said primitive spirits, we're watching over him now. Drowned in a creek a week later, spirits my ass. Something stirs in your stomach. There's a word on the tip of your tongue. Colorless, odorless, it's... Evil. 
You bet it was. You were there? No. I was in the domain. In Jamrock. Being a bouncer. You can have that. Nah. You've earned it. All right now. Free commerce! Keep the goods flowing! On the photo in your hands, the dead man's skin is studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, littering his dead skin. I'm just going to leave now. That is the easily the most horrifyingly graphic bit of the whole game. So yes, uh, anyone who's um, tapped out or muted for um, the uh, chat, you can let anyone who tapped out or muted uh, for the based on the content warnings know that it's uh, like they can dial back in. Uh, there is sort of discussion of sexual violence and that sort of thing throughout uh, a lot of these next this this stream and probably the next stream. Um, but it never gets nearly that graphic again. Right. Had a... Time to talk to the union, boys. Just need to make sure I'm not... Let me handle this. Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. You're the gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? The one Mr. Everard sent to law school? Are you Lizzie? Elizabeth? Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moves behind her eyes. In the way she stands, in her face. You caught her off guard. Push her some more. Easy Leo told me about you. He likes to talk a lot. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. You set the pace and the topic of these conversations here. Establish that. He said you were in debt to Mr. Clare. I represent the Union and these men here. Don't make this personal. A very minor victory. What's your role in all this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? What if I want to talk to you, not Titus? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. I saw what you were thinking. You want to say, what are you going to do to me? Don't. Just because it's in your head doesn't mean you have to say it. You will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. I should talk to Titus then. It's a bowl. 
there's spit in it, reeking of tobacco. Photos of men in overalls, toting guns and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. It's not time yet, apparently. This is where you say you're fed. Detective. Precinct 57's finest scans the room, leaving the speaking to you. He trusts you. Maybe against his better judgment, but he does. Hey, hey dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. First, we need to talk about your attitude. Wow. The RZM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them, reckless, swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. Yeah, gave him real nice big dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right. Boot size 44. Blonde man. In his thirties, overbearingly masculine, sitting on his right, standard working boots, size 45 or 46, eldest in the room, probably mid-fifties, smoker, quiet. Across at the other table, hobnailed working boots, size 43, gang tattoos, Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late thirties early 40s and then standard working boot steel reinforced toes size 46 the big dick wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips rugby cap fingerless gloves and numerous scars a little under 40 the emblem on his vest says rowing club a little patch below it reads t hardy captain in the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44, 40 something, non alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint. Is that a plectrum? Where? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the musician. And the little guy. Size 41, with the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy, boot size 46, deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor, and you could easily exceed 220. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. One of them is absent. The odd soul. Exactly. The missing lady driver who was running the drug trade. Does it mean the Hardy Boys are involved in the drug trade as well? This would fit what Joyce told us, but I don't want to make assumptions. Maybe. But hey. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Now is a good time to hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? 
I found eight set of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us, and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking, and we think she could maybe... She? So there's an eighth hardy, and it's a hardy girl? Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. End. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? So, you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. A real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes. Why? Because we took it from the harbor where we worked. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. As he speaks, his fists contract, going through the pulling motion again, savoring it. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. Uh-huh. So you just confessed to murder. Goddamn right. I. No. These seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. You murdered him just like that. No remorse. How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Shays Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. <laughs> Look, I'm just doing my job. That remember that them. He just Oops. forgets. Are you hearing this, Titus? Ain't no use keeping a stiff catalog into your head. That's for sure. Who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? That's for oh, the shit. cops in Le Jardin to decide, not for the officer making an arrest. Which we all know. What you can do right now is go back to your station and today? write a oh. report. No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long have you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. 
came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier, the representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid-ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my so he was a mercenary, that's it? I am. He stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohar and Semenin written all over him. ex oranese special forces. A live grenade. Right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hired Merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. There's a slight unease in him suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah, this girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young, gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt. Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted? Right, you said. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Right, but who did he rape then? This is a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter, and I'm not discussing it with you clowns. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck. Until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? You're pretty sure you've had at least two years of cop school and many more of active service. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? I'm weak. <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna... Play 20 questions with you, Capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sand. That's right, lawman. And then we hanged the fuck. Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim out? My fucking elbow copper. Samaran boxing style. Samaran boxing, or Sambo, is an eloquently violent set of one-on-one -on -one fighting moves originating from the Samaran Isola. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. Where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? Might. I've got a lot of skill points, I might pop one into composure.
Titus is solid as a rock, and so are a few others, but... Who's cracking under the pressure? <laughs> hey, you. You having trouble breathing over there? No. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. Right. I had other questions about the lynching. Like what, Corporal? How does the bullet in his head factor into all this? Huh? There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hang him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. So what are we gonna do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beating. I talked to Joyce, the merc you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Yeah, by friends, you mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. Nervous snickering. There's a rush of adrenaline present. Yes. They are forming some kind of tribunal. And they're coming for you. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it too. Let them come. The Hardy boys are right fucking here. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah. I will oil him of the machine. The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. We got weapons of our own. We got Ister 50s, Zilla guns. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. Will they pierce ceramic armor? I guess we're gonna see, aren't we? See what? That they don't? Yeah, like you've been up against ceramic armor. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. This Krenl is bad news. You know that, right? <laughs> So are the local gangs, the fucking Barmy army, and the Madre scum. You've been out there, seen any around? Yeah. Where are they now, huh? Send back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals with decades of combat experience. They are not a gang or a Barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them than you think. Joyce said they've gone rogue. Nobody is controlling them. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> do you know that a single Sarayis giant hornet can kill 40 bees in a minute? The fuck is that supposed to mean? You're the bees. They're the hornet. We're not bees. We're men. We're socialists. Easy, E. He's trying to phase you. What are you trying to do? 
scare my men. Okay. What do you mean, okay? I mean, okay, they're going to wipe you the fuck out, Titus. No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. He really doesn't like you ruffling their feathers like that on what might be the eve of battle. All he means is that the situation is serious. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. Oh, guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilo. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? No. Do the honor. You've earned it. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trader. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. I know for a fact there's still plenty of drugs out there. No, there aren't. Some little shit and his dad are doing speed. Who fucking who? The stuff's probably from Jamrock. Whatever you've seen is peanuts. Look at the big picture, man. The place is a paradise. And all thanks to Hardy Boys. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy. The one who's missing. She runs the thing, right? My answer is... Fuck. Off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. And here we go. Back to the usual. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> Go fuck your mom, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? You still haven't explained the bullet I found in the hanged man's head. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hanged man's head. You're right, Copper. That is mighty curious. Indeed, mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. I'm gonna ask you again. Why was this in the victim's head? Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think that hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid, and his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. 
That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Do you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Don't worry. We will figure this out. Sooner or later. Never been worried in my life, Lawman. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there, somewhere. As you look around yes. this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? Where have I seen this before? You believe the place was called Precinct 41. It was also filled with, almost exclusively, men, sitting on desks, talking shit and wasting time. You've seen Apricot, old Purdue's daughter, asked Lieutenant McCoy. Uh-huh, replies Torson, the ass on that one. McCoy shakes his head in appreciation. A bit strange the old man named her Apricot, but, I mean, who am I to judge? Wanna hit the kebab joint? I get it, Titus. You guys really are the authority around here. Oh. You must be. You're just like real cops, drinking beer and sitting around with your dicks in your hands. You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. No, I'm a big fan of beer and jerking off instead of helping people. You saying we don't help people? I've been doing this job for ten years. Martinez was a dump before we put this outfit together. They don't know, man. They weren't here. We had three shootings a week. Kids dead, fucking graffito everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push, quick. It's not about who did it, it's about the victim. She needs help. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up, but on his terms. You want to help her, cop? Fine. I'm going to let you help her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her, a freight train of pain. Buddy. What is her name? Clausia. I'm on duty. She's staying here with the worrying rags. A real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit. Blonde. That's I'm on duty with an O U. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. Oh, it's her! It's definitely her! It's Miss Oranje, disco dancer! Well, I say, I'm on dieu. Cool. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, but no one notices. Your spine is too damn straight. None of these people would ever suspect you've met her. What was her relationship with the mercenary? Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. Something is off here. His anger is... possessive. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. When did the rape happen? 
He did it before we killed him. He's not going to do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. All right. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. What is your relationship with her? I know her. How well do you know her? A small twitch in the corner of Kim's mouth. He has a hunch about what knowing means. Well enough, copper. We partied. She's been here for a few months. He tries to make it sound real casual, but the muscles on his neck tighten. She's not from around here. You mean Revachal? Nah, she's an immigrant. Or a drifter of some sort. Been staying here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble. She's just had some bad luck, that's all. Shut up, Angie. She doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look. They fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel about this. You should keep picking at it. You said you partied. What did you mean? What do you think I meant? Sex, drugs, and karaoke? Yes, yes, and no. Got something to say about it? So you're saying the two of you were close? No, we just fucked. That's all. I'm not gonna give you any details if that's what you're after. So put your dick away. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get from him. Thank you. We'll talk to her. Remember what I said. Freight train of pain. I'm gonna take off now. So that was a big long conversation so i'm gonna take a break read uh read some read a few kofis um may the force be with you subscribed at tier one they've subscribed for 51 months may the force be with you hello all finally had time to join a live instead of vod hey grand appropriate uh, uh, uh sorry apra pirate subscribed at tier one they've subscribed for two months thank you Kofi from Red Dead Zombie. Uh, okay, possible silver spoilers. Um, so, uh, mute for like 20 seconds if you uh, don't want that. Johnny, I heard you act out being stabbed, punched, beaten up, burnt, ribs removed, eaten by ghosts. I assume you enjoy playing poor doomed sods, but your acting in the silt verses was another level. A phenomenal, please don't, absolutely gut-wrenching. Well done. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I mean, I do quite enjoy it, uh, but it's one of those things that like I mean I do the parts people write for me uh, and if people happen to write people horribly suffering then I'm gonna do some horrible suffering that's how it goes uh, and a Kofi from May the Force Be With Youps good news it took a year but I'm finally doing great career wise I'm doing props design work at one theatre in my city and just got a full time in house position in another that makes time and a half over 40 hours sharing the good vibes oh sorry that is great news. Congratulations. Uh, props design work sounds really fucking cool. And sorry it took you a while to get there, but I'm glad that you've arrived. Um, so, yes. Uh, and uh, if anyone else is uh, enjoying me plunging through Disco Elysium, uh, please do drop a Kofi to kofi.com forward slash Johnny and Sasha. Right. The door is closed. Who is it? This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. Piles of dirty clothes, a woman's. Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she's had an extended stay. 
This room has sad all over it. Reminds you of your own. Just realized I've got a lot of skill points. I might open up another slot in the thought cabinet. Hmm. Any of these? Whatever happened to Guillaume de Million, who, with his amber mane and sparkling teeth, beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? While you suffered and suffered, did he dim dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit bois de nuit twenty years ago? Spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revachol West. Hmm. In the yard below, a corpse lies under the pine tree. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. It's been used quite a lot, but not for scrubbing blood of towels or anything else interesting, it seems. Look at the medications. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves, sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. There's quite a collection in here. Anything of note? Those pill bottles. bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol, histoperidol, something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Necra. Necra, this is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Necra, opioid antagonist. Interesting. Best use for diamorphine overdoses. Among some foreign, probably Nacinian or Godvaldian, marked red blister packs you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. Is there something more interesting here? A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it, in sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. What's so exciting about this little orange bottle? It's speed, man. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine and talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. L Lieutenant, I also see a brand called Preptide. Preptide, a euphemism for pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy. Close the cabinet. You feel someone watching you behind the glass door. A woman. The bed has been hastily made. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your finger across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. Looks like it, yes. You know which window has not been recently replaced? The one I smashed in my room? Yes, that one. Cold wind is seeping in right now. 
just one floor below you. Messing up your concentration here. Stop distracting him! He has work to do! Plus, if I recall, the window has been giving him shit ever since he got here! Thanks, Necktie. The smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astra menthol. Look. A handful of dried white wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. Move your hand fast. You catch a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand. Just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Snap my finger pistols at him. Your 9mm semi-automatic finger pistols produce a satisfying snap. Strange for such a low calibre finger gun to sound so chunky. The flower in your other hand is impressed. So is Kim. That's not entirely true. The lieutenant is looking at the door to the east and mostly misses them. Cold coffee and an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Where does this lead to? I don't know. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. You think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. Welcome to the room. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you've got here. Nice? I don't know about that, officer. Where the ripe corpse of a man still lies on the ground, spotted with green and purple. She tries to look indifferent, but still has to take a drag of her cigarette so as not to flinch. That must be her tell. The cigarette. It hurts her to look directly at the corpse, so she reverts her gaze to you. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell. To another place. A third place. Much different from our world. A third place? Interesting. That's probably why the cleaning lady quit. I am Kim Kisoragi. I am a detective from Precinct 57. I see you've already met my colleague. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have seen in my life. And I have seen a few. Oh yeah. Life gets hard, but we go on. The chorus of the 35 single, megaphoning the entire human race, instills you with the fuck it all swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. How long do you think? Until the hard wears us down. Oh, I've got a couple of good years left on my warranty. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man who was hanged. The people responsible have asked us to talk to you. Huh, I see. Be careful. 
ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you have been through something difficult. What is this wildflower? She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? Why was it there? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? What's your name, miss? For the record. Clausier Amandou. And where are you from? Vredefort, Republic of Aranje. How old are you? I'm 28. How do you do? What do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. Want to hear what's stupid? Somewhere in a one-room apartment on Boogie Street. A young man shows patrol officer Tilbrook his genital warts, asking if they're cancer. His partner, Emil Mullins, can't be there. He's in another apartment with another man who's shown him a dead dog under the radiator. It's dead, Mullins says. No, the man replies. I touched him. He's warm. He's warm, Mullins replies, because he's under the radiator. You're a cop? No, no. More stupid. Or an lit. Or an lit. Or an literature. It's what I studied at the university. What is or an literature all about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be or All national literatures are. Only the name of the nation changes. If that's true, then Revacholian Lit would fit you like a glove. Oranese Lit. What do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money, then? Money is very important. Cool. I've made more money by just being than I have with Oranese Lit. Being what? Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Oranje 37. <laughs> it's the world's most tired smile. Of course she won a beauty pageant. She's very symmetrical. Could we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? I say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. How do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausier Mondu. It's a weird name. I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. Look, officers, I like this place, but I don't want to be stuck wandering the city like a ghost after being robbed of my travel documents. I don't want to become an indentured servant in a brothel on Boogie Street, and I don't want my relatives to pay the ransom. Okay, then. Okie dokie. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Thank you. That's it. For the record. The record. So official. Nice room you've got here. Yeah. It's pretty deluxe. Where does that door lead to? I have no idea, officer. That window is new. It is. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. Hate to say it, but you've got sad all over the place. Yeah. 
I've contaminated it pretty bad. Is that why you're out here? The contamination spreads from room to room. First, I escaped upstairs. The sad got that too. Then I found the handle for the cellar door. What exactly is the nature of this contamination? For me, it's a mix of me with a lack of cleaning services. How about you? Talk around the establishment is, you have an industrial sad spill in there. Somewhere below, military grade sad is dripping off the walls. You should say the first thing. It's honest. It will lead to introspection. Something is bad in my head in the past. That's where it always comes from, isn't it? From the head and from the past. It's a feeling. White and filled with doom. Gaseous, invisible, deadly. It's everywhere. Sounds like an advanced form of what I've got. With a bit of old love sprinkled on top. Doesn't feel like love at all. Are you sure? Love is terror. Sheer terror. Panic and screaming. What are you doing here? In the whirling in racks? I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the Whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? Here in Martinez. I heard this is where the washed up disco has bins go. You came to the right place. She looks at you and nods. I have other questions for you. Okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. They tell me you've been through something difficult. Something difficult? I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? Were you sexually assaulted, miss? By sexually assaulted, you mean raped? Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? She sounds positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. Naturally, it's already afternoon. Is it? It is afternoon. Time flies, man. So, were you? Yeah. I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Titus asked you to spice things up. For us. Pretty much. Warming them. What did happen between you and the victim? We partied. What kind of partying? The kind I do? With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. Harder than this? I didn't know it was physically possible. Oh, it is. You're still alive. What did you do when you partied? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and 
We did enough of them. How did you two meet? Downstairs, at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. Must be hard for you, seeing him there all the time. Oh, yes. I have multiple viewpoints. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us, the RCM. Yes. The call. Reporting the hanging, that was you. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravasha, Miss. The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it? How? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So, she's God's mystery phone cutter. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the Union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, you'd still be hanging there. He won't be down there long, miss. We will move the body to the morgue soon. What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age... I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know... Hair? I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. She meant she sees him in her dreams. I've also seen him in a dream. You have? Not like I do, I imagine. How do you see him? You don't want to know. I see him as... me. She dips the cigarette in the lighter's flame and inhales, then looks at you with her lungs full of smoke. I can see the similarity, yes. Funny. Funny how? Nothing. I also saw him. We had a long inspection and that sort of thing sticks with you. Let's move on. What did they hang him for, if not for rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in this strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military. Worked for Wild Pines. And against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Why was there a bullet in his head? A bullet? They shot him too? They stripped his clothes and they shot him? You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me. And Sylvie, the bartender. It's hard to know what to think about that answer. She's just tired. Don't push her too much. How do the Hardy boys know you? They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. 
And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. Thank you for telling us all this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. Let's go. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Why did she tell us all that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. Something is off here. You think so? She seemed forthcoming. Unusually so. Being forthcoming about some things is a good way to obscure other things. The best liars are always forthcoming. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back here soon enough. Dried Malbay bells. This is the wildflower you caught. One of a bouquet of... Mo of... Mugwats? That you found on the whirling roof. It's shedding its petals quickly in your pocket. Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. They're white. A bell-shaped crown. What is this, Kim? This is the Insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the Revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? Who pinned them? Which side? The revolutionaries, so the communards and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army so it held meaning for the kinsmen too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Was this flower blossom in early spring? Yes, but not this early, not to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. Is it a coincidence, it being on the roof? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Very well. The petals feel dry and fragile in your hand. The bullet mushroomed out on impact. It now looks more like a fanciful jacket button than something that could pierce skin, flesh and bone. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled head of cauliflower. What do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. 
little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark grey core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimetres in diameter. Another jacket. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you see about the bullet so far? It's a jacketed bullet, close to five millimetres in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech-loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This'll have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. Give it a shot. You can't remember what happened last week. What makes you think you're going to remember arcane firearm models? It's you again. What is it? Vasya says she wasn't right. Fuck. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down. And she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. What the bullshit? She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking hit you. Duck. Titus Hardy. Success. Titus backs off. Fist down, everybody. Everard personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? The room is so quiet you could hear a pin drop. The rest of the cafeteria has gone quiet, too. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. So what's on the tape? What's on it? We call it the door gun a mega mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? Where did you get this type? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. So you've bugged them. How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. 
Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which one of you is doing this advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. Where can I listen to this? I'm sure we can find a tape player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Fine. I'll listen to it. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Gonna take off now. Spirited chirps and clicks of swallows fill the air. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a board game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. All right, I got this. Ball time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. This felt wrong. Wrong like touching your sister's breast. You threw your sister's breast. Mon dieu! Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. The throw was terrible and you know it. No need to mock me. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much perfect betong throw. With a pinch of fear. How are you ever going to get the officer's shit up your nose, Gaston? Or even climb out of his ass? Perfect throw. Well, I still feel defeated. Your guess is as good as mine, officer. Maybe you're just one of those men who's never satisfied with anything. Regardless, what do you need from us? Yes, officer. What do we need from this gentleman? Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of the Whirling in Rags? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most of the locals? 
Il Martinez. The union is in law. But can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem, Miss Policeman. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. So, again, you don't know anything? If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. Rene, I found your guard booth. Yes, the Debardieu's union pays me to stand with you during the nights. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and... Money is tight. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something on the night of the murder. Your booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Hold on, why are you on leave? It's a private matter. Nothing to do with your investigation. You see, officer, René is the kind of man would rather die than admit he needs medical assistance or, God forbid, seek it. A real man's man is just gonna ride it out. I'm fine, goddammit. Mind your own business. <laughs> it's nothing. Just got to cut back on coffee. So who was working your shift that night? No one. The bus has been unmanned since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday? Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. So it doesn't matter if you're there or not. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Hebrard created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabinier's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting tear reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His works. Everard gets here. Big guys looking after the small and everyone working together. I love it. Can we conclude the topic of my guard booth now? I, uh, saw a picture in there. You were in it. You looked happy. Who's the girl? She? Is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Got it. Thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, like I said, I would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. Do Maybells mean anything to you, René? I prefer the old name. Insulindian Lily. Girls brought them to young cadets when they entered service. Wearing them on your cap was supposed to bring good luck. Hold on, is this a royalist military tradition? It used to be. But the communards were fond of them too. Call them revolutionary flowers. Bells of the revolution. Did they bring you good luck? You know what? No. They bought me misery. False hope. And disappointment. The revolutionaries sullied them. But it wasn't the revolutionaries that sullied the idea for you, was it? She gave them to me too. And your jealous little heart just couldn't accept it. Enough! I can go over these matters in detail with you, Gaston. But not while we have company. 
So, officers. Maybe it's don't blossom yet, do they? Maybe on some remote parts of the city they do. But I think you have to wait for at least a month. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Does it have anything to do with all the bullet holes I've been seeing around? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Okay, it's a crater left by artillery fire. But why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. Why show them here in Martinez? Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deflo in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Deathblow. Sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we are playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Is that why everything is so bombed out? Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Nothing. I don't think. I just do. I'm just so damn sorry it had to be the coalition. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Frisell had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. You mentioned Guillaume. A true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Who was this Frisell? Damn Frisell. He was a king we couldn't protect. The Carabineers failed him, and the Crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. Mm. 
What exactly is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? Have they forgotten already? Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's borders when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. I saw the statue of Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Ah, yes. King Philip the Third on his steed. A reminder of what Revachol once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. And Lesion is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. No one and nothing can change this man's mind. He is as rigid as they come, still in that antique uniform. It's a symbol for him. What was that about cocaine? Oh, Paul Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> His egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Regnum cocaineum, Revachol's finest years. Of course, clarity of vision, awareness. Philippe III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. Higher realms? Of course, it all makes sense. What was that about higher realms? Sounds interesting. It's really not. Please, do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. Yes, indeed. We're not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. Let's talk about something else. Right. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? As Rene turns from you to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. How many medals are there? Two. The larger one is shaped like a cross while the smaller medal resembles the sun. Look at the cross. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The medal hangs from a blue-striped triangle. It's the Croix de Bravour, Cross of Valor. The cross was the highest battlefield decoration in Suzerain's armed forces, awarded for exceptional bravery in the line of duty, in service of King Frisel I. Look at the sun. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. The setting sun was a decoration used to distinguish seasoned combat veterans in service of King Frizzel I during the revolution. Roy de Bovar and the setting sun. Did you get them for... For bravery. It's a conflicted topic for the old veteran. There must have been a number of controversial episodes in the service days. For bravery? For doing my duty in the heat of battle. For looking my mortality in the eye. When men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shat themselves. 
He saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. Saved a princeling? It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachol. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar, wearing a tunic of purple velvet and cockatoo feathers to battle. <coughs> Even his rifle was gold-plated, shown from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? Purple velvet tunic. Hmm. That isn't exactly camel. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drisson marched us against the partisans in Koron. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. Must have been a bloodbath. I got shot in the left shoulder and went down. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. Hang on to the story. Veterans get sentimental after such retellings. This might yield something useful. Okay. Then what did you do? I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Capitaine Arno, le fléau des chevaux. When I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Jolas Dresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. I would never have a Johnny Law jaw. My jaw is tight. Right, right. So I grabbed the prick and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th Cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jealous freak convinced Frisell to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood, peace and shit. He was the commanding officer and I was on duty, just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the son for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. Sounds like you're being modest, Renee. The old carabineer stands quietly like a statue, his features motionless. What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Brison. Two days later, that was. And that even while crawling with mangled half dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself. It's there. Hold on. You're just a little bit proud of Rene's heroics, aren't you? Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace, and these kinds of bloody heroics are only impressive to men like Rene himself. Certainly not to me. How did you find the story to be, officer? Quite impressive. It's men like Rene who made Rebishaw great once. Maybe, maybe, but also bear in mind, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Oh no, you have to get shot. Repeatedly. And you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty 
is something you will never understand. Thanks for the story, Renai. Bah! There were many such stories in those days. Many such men, too. True Eversholians. Men with backbone. Oh, yes, René, yes. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Law, please bring those days back, if you can. I'm not getting into this with you again. <sighs> Officer, was there anything else? You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Impress this old soldier. Thank you for your time. And on that note, I think we're calling this stream done. Enormous balls worthy of a real man. We're making our way through, slowly but surely. I'm just going to check if there's any more messages to be read. Oh, there are there are a few actually. Kofi from Cam Captain. Hey Johnny, I'm only four episodes into Silk Versus, but I'm st so I'm stoked to find out you're in it. Have you really been using a trackpad to play every game since the Resident Evil era? Was that just a joke to distract chat? If so, it worked. I'm distressed. Bloodborne with a trackpad. Uh, okay, so just to manage your expectations, I have a cameo in one episode of the Silk Versus. Uh, it's a pretty chunky role within that episode but it's just the one episode so don't listen through it expecting me to um you know be a, a significant part of the of the story uh and uh i have used a trackpad for every game i have played on the pc which is to be clear the minority the vast majority of the games i've played have been on uh especially the from soft ones have been played on either a ps4 or a ps5 so in those cases i've obviously been playing um i've obviously played um uh, with a controller uh, let's see, which ones did I play on the laptop? So it would have been uh, with a trackpad. Um, Power Wash Simulator was the one where it came up. And people were like, what is going on? Um... Oh, I played Signalis on a trackpad. Uh, which was definitely harder than using a mouse. But, you know, it was fine. Uh, I played World of Horror uh, using a trackpad. But that's, you know, that's 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 now is it uh, that's easy enough um played the stanley parable using a, a trackpad um played i mean obviously uh all the all these ones sorry i'm just looking through my old uh, oh i played an airport for aliens company run by dogs using a trackpad um it's just i mean i it's how I play games on a laptop, which is why I don't play too many like shooters and that on a laptop. I, I generally play those on my console. But uh, yeah, it's just, you know, just used to it and it's a bit easier than... Uh, it's just, just a bit easier, isn't it? Well, it's not easier, it's just more convenient. Um, Kofi from Crispy. Uh, Hi Johnny, me and my friends are travelling around Europe and we just arrived in our fourth, in our fifth city, Budapest. Uh, however, we have all caught cold, so we are watching stream together to cheer ourselves up. So thanks for that, and I hope you've had a great week. I've had an okay week, and um, I, I hope it has. I hope it successfully cheered you up. Ah, um, oh, I remember Budapest. I was a. Uh, I didn't stay in Budapest. I'm, I've only been to Budapest once, and it was only for a day or two. But I remember having a good time there. I hope you have a good time as well. Uh, Kofi from Red Dead Zombie. Good news, I'm going on holiday tomorrow. Sad news, I'll miss the streams. Hopefully you will still be discoing when I return, but if not, I'll hopefully meet you and some of the Twitch chat at the premiere in October. P.S. Watching you mute Alex on stream was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I had a good time doing that. Uh, and um, I will definitely still be discoing when you get back. We've got many weeks left in disco. I would say we are maybe... 40% of the way through? Uh, somewhere between 30 and 40%. Uh, 
Uh, Kofi from Tempest Montgomery. Happy Friday, Johnny and Chat. Wonderful stream this week. Um, I've never got this far in my playthrough, so I've been enjoying watching the story twist into itself. The characters are so compelling, and wonderful job as Harry again. You've really knocked it out of the park this week. Ah, oh, thank you. And um, yeah, I like it. It the story goes some places. Uh, a quote from Harem. Hi, Johnny. Harry's jaw do be tight. Tighter than Balfour's, that is. Who hoot. Sorry for the bout of silliness. You are absolutely... Uh, you, you are completely uh, fine to be silly. Uh, Harem was uh, a player in a uh, game of Wizard Staff um, that uh, I ran, ran at a recent Dungeons & Flagons weekend uh, up in Manchester. And uh, Balthior was the the wizard who died. They were trying to, you know, cover up. Oh, Iron Lung. Yeah, I played Iron Lung with a trackpad. But that was, that's like, that's first person. But it's, I mean, you're not actually moving. So it's not exactly. Um, Red Dead Zombie, your annoyance with the mechanics of Signalis makes so much sense now. No, th to, to be fair, I had no problem with like the mechanic. The thing, the, it was the inventory mechanics that were, that um, I struggled with a bit. Uh, and that had, and that wouldn't have been any difference with a mouse. Uh, there were one or two moments when there were lots of enemies uh, and uh, like getting them to getting her to stamp properly was a bit of a, a chore. But, you know, it's fine. I got through. Um, oh, Finn has asked for a raid. She's playing Spiritfarer. Lovely. I like a bit of Spiritfarer. Okay. Sorry for the recursion as I... Okay. Let's have a raid. Or what's our what's our raid phrase? Um, what's our what's our raid phrase? I don't know. There haven't been a lot of funny lines in this in this stream. <laughs> it's been a bit of a heavy one. Um, you are a fork in a world of soup, Project Sloth Cafe. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, our raid phrase is, you're a fork in a world of soup. Alright, well, thank you all very much uh, for joining me uh, for this most disco of Elysium. Uh, and, you know, as we say at the end of every stream... Uh, look at the dicks. Big swinging dicks. Bye!